against the Karokan is not easy. Uh, we have had, had many videos with Karokan and uh, it's a very fascinating opening. So we will keep on uh, having that on GM Talks. Uh, today we're going to see a game that we see so won against uh, Ali Resha uh, Firusha, the great uh, talent uh, who's original from Iran and uh, now plays for FIDE until he decides which federation to switch to. It's played in the Magnus Carlsen Invitational and it's a rapid game. Uh, and uh, Wesley So uses the advanced variation in the Karakan and wins a great game. And we're just going to see it and I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, uh, the, the, the advanced variation because it's kind of difficult to understand both as white and black. I had had bad results both with white and black. So maybe I'm the, not, the, not the most qualified teacher here, uh, but I'll give it a try anyway. Um, so white starts with e4. Uh, this is necessary to get the Karakan, which comes after c6. And the advanced variation. Uh, this is, uh, I think, uh, the critical test of the Karakan. I think uh, in, in, in the main lines, white is sort of stuck. He doesn't get an advantage. So he's, uh, at the moment, uh, looking at this mostly. And Wesley So have, have played this uh, many times uh, and played different lines. He uh, has often played a quick uh, knight d2, knight b3, uh, keeping the option of playing f4. I think he's also played the line with h4. Uh, Firusha plays bishop f5. You can also play c5, um, and, and this leads to completely different position, more akin to the uh, French. And knight f3, and this is known as the short variation, a short usage to, uh, to, to win against Karpov, and, uh, and it is a very difficult and interesting line. It's not easy to understand what's going on. Um, one thing to, to notice is that we have, earlier have we seen the game Nimsovic Capablanca, where black won a model game uh, in this opening, uh, just using the c-file and the good bishop uh, and, and marking uh, d4 as a weakness. And, if, and the thing is, if white does not get some kind of attacking chances for his, uh, out of his space advantage, he will probably be worse. So uh, strategically, this is a bit uh, dangerous line for white to play, and you really have to know what you're doing. One important thing to know is that this bishop is actually very strong, and, uh, and people who think it's just a bad French bishop that got outside the pawn change and should be exchanged whenever possible, uh, they're not getting it, because this bishop is better than the knight uh, here. Uh, uh, we'll put that in red. Uh, because if they are exchanged, then this white bishop here will be unopposed on the white squares and uh, will be a very strong piece. And black will have trouble getting counterplay because whenever he tries to get counterplay, he will weaken the white squares. Uh, we can see that if he plays c5, he weakens the white square. If he plays f6, he weakens the white square. And so the bishop will be missing and he will usually uh, run out of counterplay at some point. Or fall victim to a violent attack. This was one of uh, the really uh, deep points of the short variation. It's very abstract. I will try to explain it in a later video again. Um, so keep watching. Okay, e6, this is all normal. Um, castle, h6, getting some... Um, the thing is, if uh, white is, if black is, is, is afraid that white will go here and simply take the bishop. And if that goes, then white is, uh, in general, better. Uh, white has, has very good results with uh, exchanging the knight for the bishop. So black does not want to, uh, to exchange the bishop for the knight uh, without getting something in return. So if they just disappear, it's good for white. So he's making air for it. Uh, it has place down here to, to hide if it's attacked. Um, and, and white is, of course, dreaming to have this bishop left and this bishop gone. Okay, here uh, knight bd7. Another thing um, 
97. Black is very flexible. In the old days, uh, black used to rush with, uh, with with this, but it gives uh, that there's this problem that this bishop here is outside the pawn chain. Outside the pawn chain, it cannot help with the white squares on the queen side. So often there are some problems, especially with this square. Uh, and, and this is not so easy uh, and it leads to very violent chess uh, and it's very interesting but it's not really what the, the, the general Karakan player wants as black. They want to have a more quiet life, an easier life. Knight b3. Okay, one thing to notice here is if black goes something that you would like to do, uh, something like, um, this is a variation, this is not the game, uh, knight g6. Okay, I'll show you with a real move. Um, and here, black, white is, is threatening um, and trapping the bishop. Uh, if it goes here, black, white has this move. Um, so uh, and and also, so black will have to go back, and white will be able to uh, to to move the pawn forward and keeping this uh, pawn strong here. So this is explains why it's black's next move, which is looks a bit weird. G5. So this is, uh, is the idea. Black wants to play this move, and also he's getting space on the, the king side. But at the same time, with, with this structure here, it's not going to be safe for the king on the king side. The king will not feel completely at home on the king side. It might be, and, and black will try to surround it by pieces that will do most of the defending, but it's not going to be totally safe over there. And we're going to see that in the game. Okay, bishop d2. Um, there's also some ideas. Uh, this square is sometimes uh, interesting for white knight, and, uh, and white is also uh, looking forward to, to do something like this. Um, a5. I'm not sure I like this move. Uh, there is something uh, not very logical about playing first d5 and then a5. But um, not so so simple. Okay. And white plays a4. And this was part of uh, white's plan anyway uh, to play a4. And 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 often white plays a4, a5. Queen c7. Getting some uh, ready, to, maybe to to castle queenside c3, and and basically uh, black is white is just hoping for black to castle queenside because then comes uh, c4 with a very violent attack, very fast on the queenside. So black cannot castle queenside here after played a5. So f6 also very normal and takes and and of course uh, you don't want to take back because then the knight jumps in here. And leaving also giving some some uh, some moves here and f4 can come and black structure looks really bad especially this pawn is is a problem. Knight g6 also normal. Okay, white starts to attack. He has to open the position. Black has made many pawn moves and is not very solid, uh, but he does have some uh, some superiority in the center and he has some nice pieces. Uh, and this is also kind of uh, the normal uh, way to play. He's maybe threatening to, to go g4, uh, attacking down here on this square. Okay, take, probably have to take back. I think d4 it just jumps in or take on e6 or something. And uh, here it's white to move. And, and here Wesley finds a great move to, um, to use his... Uh, his lead in development. He is, uh, his, his king is safe and uh, why black still has a pawn on f6, uh, this pawn, uh, that he, he, he wants to take back. Um, so, how to strike against black's position here? Wesley came up with the, the great move and this also shows that Wesley is a very strong player. Um, he didn't do so well later in the later stages of the tournament, but when Carlsen was asked uh, to name his biggest problems in one word, he said Wesley. So that's 
sort of tells a little bit about it. Uh, bishop here. Whoa, you can just take it, right? It's it's just lost. Okay, and you probably have to take it because this pressure here is a huge problem. So have to take, and so oh, and um, simultaneously, uh, black is threatening here. White is threatening the queen here and threatening the bishop here. And of course, you have to uh, to to do something about the queen, so you have to take. Um, the thing is, if white gets to take on on here, then he will also threaten here. Take, take, and take. So what happened? Uh, white gave away uh, two uh, minor pieces for a rook. Uh, he gave away. Yes, for a rook. But also, he kept this uh, pawn here, and this king is not really safe. It needs an unsafe color. Uh, and there are some problems on the white scare. So here comes the queen uh, attacking here, and, um, and this we will see is important. And and I think Wesley has uh, had had realized that he was uh, he was probably in a very good position here because Black's position lacks harmony. Queen d8, Rook a e1, and this looks weird because why do you take this? Uh, this why do you have this Rook uh, boxed in? Uh, the thing is, White knows that it will be in the e file. Things will be decided. Uh, so it's nice for him. That if there's something taken here, it's not with check because there's another rook. So he might be able to make an intermediate move. So this explains uh, why he takes this rook. And uh, this is a go old saying that you always take the wrong rook, but I'm positive that this was the right rook. And uh, here he he's uh, the, the big uh, nasty thing is is 95 may come. Uh, another option uh, might be rook e7. Uh, just giving the rook up, giving the exchange, but opening uh, the king completely. He plays here, um, and rook e7, check. Boom, you have to, uh, you cannot allow that rook there. And the other rook came in, and of course there is only one move. And here, and we see that, and here the ta tactics, uh, and this is also why you are, I'm, I'm pretty impressed with uh, Wesley's play because he must have seen this and uh, that this position was totally lost for black. Uh, the first thing you have to notice is that if he takes here and white takes back, um, then this rook is lost. Okay, so you can't do that. Uh, another thing is you're threatening knight f7 hitting a lot of things here. Yeah, okay. So you can't take, you can't move the knight because of check here. So you can move the rook. Okay, but what about the counter-attack? Counter Why can't you play this move? And, and, and this is something uh, because you're hitting the, the rook and getting uh, rid of it, and knight f7, you just move. And what what was, uh, but Wesley didn't miss this, because he had, and this is an important resource, boom. And due to, uh, to this pin and this attack, he's winning the queen. Tricky guy, this Wesley. Instead he played rook h7, uh, take here, and, um, and after, and here probably he was in time trouble because after this he was made it. Uh, a great attack by Wesley So against Firusha. Uh, many believe that Firusha is a future world champion, and he is definitely one of uh, the players we have on serious watch uh, all over. Uh, I think all chess interested people are are curious about Firusha also because he has has this talented style with with the dynamics just sort of flowing from his fingers. I kind of love it. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this and um, remember to su subscribe in and like and so on. Thank you.